I started this channel about a year ago, and through these videos, I've met a lot of people who have heard about Christian mysticism through podcasts and YouTube, but now they want to go a little deeper and maybe start a mystical practice for themselves. I started this channel in the first place to help people find that next step into Christian mysticism. So in this series of videos, I'm going to talk about what you can do to learn about Christian mysticism and how to start putting some spiritual disciplines together for a more mystical life. So you want to get deeper into Christian mysticism, but you're tired of reading blog posts and watching YouTube videos. It's time to get serious and put in some study time. Where do you start? Well, a lot of people have asked me what I think of Richard Rohr. He's a Franciscan friar. He's been on a lot of podcasts and he's responsible in large part for some of the revival of interest in Christian mysticism that's going on at the moment. So maybe you find Brother Richard interesting. You buy one of his books. You like what he has to say. But then your Christian upbringing kicks in and you aren't sure that what you're reading is actually in bounds when it comes to basic Christian teaching. Is Richard Rohr a safe Christian teacher? That's a question that I get asked a lot. Should you listen to him and read his books? Well, here's my opinion on Richard Rohr. I love his books. <laughs> I've actually given away a lot of copies of The Naked Now, and that's where I would start if you haven't read Richard Rohr. The Divine Dance is a phenomenal book on the Trinity, and yes, it does get into the doctrine of the Trinity a little bit, but mostly it's about why the idea of the Trinity was so important to early Christian spirituality and why it's still important for mystics today. And one of my personal favorites is not very popular, but it's his book, Eager to Love, which is his take on St. Francis of Assisi, and I just found it delightful. So yeah, read Brother Richard, uh, or spend some audiobook credits on a book that he reads himself. There's a lot of great stuff there. Richard Rohr is a very accessible, mystical writer, and you will grow in your faith if you read what he has to say. But there is a problem with Richard Rohr, and it's not really his fault. If you jump from a basic Sunday school understanding of the Bible to Reformation theology, like a lot of us do when we hit young adulthood, to a Richard Rohr podcast or book because Reformation theology isn't really working for you anymore, you're missing a lot of steps in the development of Christian thought, and of course some of the things that Richard Rohr says are going to sound strange to you. To build a deep understanding of Christian spirituality and mysticism, you need to learn a little bit about the earlier mystics and how Christian mysticism developed alongside institutional Christianity. When you understand that, more contemporary writers like Richard Rohr will make a lot more sense and your personal spiritual disciplines will have deeper roots in the tradition and it'll be a lot easier for you to decide how and what to practice. So this is not an exhaustive list, but here are some books that have personally helped me connect all the dots and fill in all the colors around Christian mysticism. There are links in the description for each one of these. First, to really get Christian mysticism, you have to be familiar with the Bible, and especially the New Testament, and especially the teachings of Jesus. Historically, Christian mystics are always Christians first, and everything that they've written grows from or points back to the Gospels. So, read your Bible and pay special attention to Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And if you want to transform your Bible reading into something more meaningful and spiritual like the ancient mystics did, I've got a video coming up soon called How to Read the Bible Spiritually. So look for that. It should be a big help. The second book on the list is called The Life of St. Anthony by Athanasius of Alexandria. This is the book that tells us all about the origins of the monastic movement and why some Christians decided to leave the cities and become monks and nuns in the desert in the first place. If you want to understand mysticism as a distinct form of Christian faith, what its goals are and where the practices come from, you have to read The Life of St. Anthony. The third set of books to read are the writings of St. Maximus the Confessor. It's kind of a jump from Athanasius to Maximus. You skip over several centuries of Christian history, but Maximus was one of the last writers who was popular in both the Eastern and Western Church before the Great Schism. His writing looks back on several centuries of mystical teaching, and Maximus collects the best of it and then summarizes it in a way that's fairly easy to understand, even if you don't have a background in Greek philosophy. A lot of people try to start with the Philokalia, which is a collection of the writings of the desert monks and nuns, but I would actually start with St. Maximus because his work is some of the best work in the Philokalia and his writing style has held up very well over the centuries and so you shouldn't have a problem getting what he's saying. Highlights from Maximus are the ascetic life, which is a question and answer style introduction to Christian mysticism. That's one of my favorite books of all time in any category. 
Another is Maximus's commentary on the Lord's Prayer, where he introduces the mysteries of salvation through the prayer that Jesus taught, the Lord's Prayer or the Our Father. And then 400 Texts on Love introduces the mystical understanding of the soul and how we become more like God by becoming more like Christ. If you want to read ancient Christian mystical literature, and I know that you do, start with those works from St. Maximus. Moving to medieval mysticism, The Dark Night of the Soul by St. John of the Cross is absolutely required reading for anyone with mystical ideas. It talks about all the mistakes that new mystics make and what to do when the light goes out of your prayer practice. Whenever you read this book, I promise that as you're reading it, you'll wonder why you didn't read it sooner. Um, along with St. John of the Cross, I know that St. Teresa is popular and some of the more esoteric mystics from that time period, like Meister Eckhart. But I honestly wouldn't start with medieval mysticism until you understand the mystical tradition in general and you've kind of got your legs under you so you can understand what they're saying. Now, there are some more modern works that review the mystical tradition and give you kind of like a historical grounding that a lot of us are looking for. And no modern writer is better at that than Thomas Merton. If you've read someone like Richard Rohr, but you're wondering what steps you missed along the way, Thomas Merton will set you straight. His spiritual autobiography is called The Seven Story Mountain, and it's very good and a little heartbreaking. His book, Contemplative Prayer, is a must read for anyone who prays. And he has a book called A Course in Christian Mysticism, which is a very serious overview of the history of Christian mysticism from the time of the New Testament all the way up to the present. It helps if you have a background in church history if you want to read that one, but if you have good Wikipedia skills and you can put them to work, you should be fine. And last but not least, there's a book called The Roots of Christian Mysticism by Olivier Clement. Clement takes excerpts of all the mystical writings from the past, but he stitches them together into a comprehensive outline of the philosophy and practice of Christian mysticism. He also adds his own commentary, and the book is basically a mystical library in itself. If you're wondering if there's one book that tells you what Christian mysticism is all about, Roots of Christian Mysticism is definitely it. Now, one of the shortcomings of all these sources is that they don't really tell you how to pray or meditate step by step. The ancient monks never imagined that there would be a bunch of Protestant or spiritually curious people in, someday in the future trying to practice spiritual disciplines all alone by ourselves. So they didn't usually include any instructions in their writings for how to pray. That information was passed on in the monastery to new recruits. So if you want an encyclopedia full of ancient Christian spiritual practices with clear instructions so that you can practice them today, I definitely recommend the Spiritual Disciplines Handbook by Adele Albert Calhoun. And also the next few videos in this series will be some practical directions for getting started with your own basic mystical practice. So that's my recommended reading list for building a deeper understanding of Christian mysticism. It's not exhaustive. And one thing that I'd like to say is that if reading a bunch of books to you just seems like a total turnoff, you don't have to deeply study the mystical tradition if you want to be a mystic. You can get there without reading an entire library of ancient texts. Um, but it does make it a lot easier. So hopefully I gave you a place to start. Those books were all very meaningful to me. We'll see you next time until Christ is formed in us.